Hi guys. So I'm here to do another Lightning Thief video for you. And this is chapters 14, 15, 16, and 17. I will try not to make a drag out. Um, the last thing we read about was Percy jumping into the Mississippi River, hoping his father would save him. And so he does that. And chapter 14 is called, I become a uh, known fugitive. And um, he dives into the river and he is, when he lands, it's like comfortable, he's fine, which is not what would normally happen if you dove 1600 feet or 16, 600 feet into the Mississippi River. Um, he also notices that his wounds heal like almost immediately. He's also completely dry underwater. So he can like light a cigarette underwater and it's burning. Um, he notices that everything he touches becomes dry and uh, he thanks his father for helping him out. He sees the sword at the bottom of the river, so he gets the sword, and he also meets a water spirit while he's down there who gives him a couple messages. Um, first of all, she tells him that his mom basically can be saved, and he needs to go to Santa Monica Beach when he reaches Los Angeles, and she mentions that a couple of times. Um, she also uh, warns him not to trust any gifts that come his way. So that's kind of an interesting, maybe foreshadowing that something's going to pop up and he'll have to make a decision. Um, he gets to the surface and he finds there's just complete chaos happening. Um, there's like police and ambulances and helicopters and all of it and um, a huge crowd. So he's able to get make, make it out and get to Annabeth and Grover and um, he in the meantime sees that the news is reporting that he Percy Jackson caused the explosion at top of, at the top of the arch and is now there's a massive manhunt for him um so they book it out of there and they get to an Amtrak station and they take off um that's chapter 14 chapter 15 is a god buys us cheeseburgers love these titles <laughs> um so they do a um a call to Half Blood Hill, and um, they actually get a hold of Luke, who says that um, Chiron's not available. He's busy, busy with all the other campers, and there's been some issues happening at Camp Half Blood. Um, while they're making this this phone call, like there's a car blasting music ahead of them, so they can't really hear what Luke is saying. Um, so when they finally do hear him, they learn that the campers are kind of taking sides in this war that's going to happen between Zeus and Poseidon. So camp is just a complete chaotic mess right now. Um, and Percy kind of fills Luke in on what's been happening with them. Uh, Luke makes an accusation and says that Hades stole the bolt and that pro he probably used his helm of darkness to, to do it. Um, so unfortunately, their phone call message option disappears at that point. So they can no longer talk to, to Luke. They end up going to a diner so they can um, get some food. And when they get there, there's this huge, like, biker, these huge biker dudes that come into the diner. Um, and they sit down, like, right in the booth with Annabeth, Percy, and Grover. And Percy, of course, is extremely uh, annoyed. But what we find out is this is actually Ares, the god of war. So Ares asks um, Percy a favor. He left his shield in the Tunnel of Love ride, which is at a local water park, and he needs them to get the shield for him. Um, so Percy, even though it's the God of War, doesn't really, he kind of gives Ares a little bit of an attitude, but Ares promises that he'll give them a ride to Los Angeles if they get the shield. So they go off to the water park, and um, it's getting like evening time. And they jump over a padlock fence, they get into the park, and they try to find this particular ride, which is called the Tunnel of Love. And Grover kind of admonishes Percy and says, you need to be more respectful. You're talking to, you know, Aries, basically. Um, and Annabeth steals some clothes and some things from a water park store for them. They find the ride, which is a tunnel that goes to an empty pool. And there are all these statues of Cupid. Um, so they see this the the shield and percy grabs it but it's a trap the whole thing was a trap so the cupid statues start shooting arrows at him um they're percy and annabeth are trapped in the pool and there are these camera like the the heads of the cupid statues like burst off and there's <laughs> cameras there so 
Um, this li loudspeaker suddenly tells them that they're being filmed live at, for Mount Olympus. <laughs> And then all these metallic spiders start pouring into the pool and Annabeth's really afraid of spiders. So again, we have complete chaos that happens very quickly. Um, Percy, it's water. So Percy uses his water powers to, um, to get water into the pool and then basically push them toward um, onto the boat and toward the exit. So they're able to get out um, and with the shield. Um, and it turns out that Aphrodite's um, jealous husband, Hephaestus, had tried to catch her and Ares. Um, in the act of cheating on him, and so he wanted to trap and humiliate them in front of Mount Olympus, which is why this all happened to Percy, Annabeth, and Grover. Um, but they're still being filmed at this point. So once Percy yells at the cameras, they basically turn off, and he's really embarrassed, and he's really angry at Ares <laughs> for this embarrassing episode. Um, and so that ends chapter 15 for you guys. And then we have 16, which is we take a zebra to Vegas. Um, they, they basically get back to Aries with the shield. Aries is teasing them about what happened. And um, he tells them that their ride to Los Angeles is going to be the uh, humane zoo transport, which is live wild animals as well. So they're going to be live, riding in the back of a truck with live animals, live wild animals. Okay, that's, that's fun and exciting. Um, but he does give them a backpack full of clothes, food, and money. And um, in the meanwhile, somebody at the diner takes a picture of Percy and Aries, um, which is not good. He does, Percy does ask Aries about his mom and Aries tells Percy his mom isn't dead. She's just being kept hostage and um, somebody's using mom to control Percy's actions. Percy's is pretty, Percy's pretty upset at this point. So he insults Aries and there almost becomes this fight which is not good but Aries takes off um so the three Percy Annabeth and Grover jump into this truck with the animals and they have these sad sad animals um an antelope a zebra an albino lion they're all in cages um they're not being treated very well or fed very well the cages are a mess um Grover's really upset especially they're all upset but Grover's especially sad because remember he can talk to animals so um, once the truck gets on the road, the three of them give their food, a lot of their food basically to the animals and refill their water for them. And Grover promises to help them in the morning. Um, they're about to go to sleep when Thalia's death comes up again. So it turns out that Grover was the satyr who was assigned to rescue Thalia and get her safely to Camp Half-Blood, but she was attacked. Um, Annabeth and Luke were also there. So they had all run away from home, and even though Grover was assigned to help Thalia only, he helped all of them get to Ham Camp Half-Blood, um, but he failed because he didn't protect Thalia, and she ends up dying. Um, Annabeth and Percy try to make him feel better about what happened and try to help him understand that no matter what, they're going to help him find um, the god Pan, which is who all the satyrs are looking for. So Grover feels pretty good and goes to sleep. Um, we also find out about the ring that Annabeth wears around her neck. Uh, it belonged to her father, who was a professor at a West Point Military Academy. Um, and he sent her the ring two summers ago and told her he missed her and wanted her to come home. But when she went home, it was horrible. Her stepmother was mean to her. And um, the monsters came after her again and put the family at risk. So she ends up going back to Camp Half Blood for good. Um, Percy kind of tells Annabeth don't give up on your dad. And Annabeth doesn't really want to hear anything like that. So they end up going to sleep. There's another nightmare. Um, Sally is in the nightmare for Percy. And um, Percy hears this cold voice and he can't really place it, but it's a familiar voice. And um, he basically is overhearing a conversation about the stealing of the bolt. So... Um, he also sees his mother, which again, remember Aries said he's being controlled by someone who's trying to use his mother. So he wakes up and they're in Vegas, Las Vegas. Um, they hide, kind of hide in the truck because the animal, the truck, um, animal keepers are coming to check on the animals. Um, they end up freeing the animals and Grover gives them a blessing, hoping that they can find their freedom. 
So they run off through the streets of Las Vegas, causing a huge com commotion. Um, and the three end up walking down the streets, um, trying to figure out what to do next. They end up at a hotel, which is called the Lotus Hotel and Casino, and someone invites them in kindly, so they go in. They see this huge game room and every kind of snack and game you could imagine, which is really exciting. Um, they're given casino cash cards with an unlimited amount of credit, um, so they don't have to pay anything. The bills are all taken care of, and they can use the credit cards anywhere in the casino. And they have a room on the top floor. Very suspicious. Um, they end up going up to their room. They shower, eat, relax. Um, they decide to go down to the game room and everybody finds the perfect game for them. So, um, they start getting kind of embroiled in all of that, but Percy kind of feels like he should talk to his friends, but he, he can't figure out, he can't figure out why he needs to talk to them. And he's just is like, oh, well, it'll, it can wait. Um, he meets a kid who <laughs> is also staying in a casino and looks like Elvis and Percy asks him what year it is. And the guy says 1977. Okay, so big hint. There's a huge issue going on here. Um, he, all the people that Percy talks to think it's a different year. He finally gets Annabeth and Grover out of the casino, and the bellhop there tries to offer them another, like, platinum credit card and a whole new floor of games and all of that, but they take off. Um, so... Percy grabs a newspaper and realizes that it's June 20th and they've been at the casino for five days, which felt like no time whatsoever. Um, and they only have one day left before their deadline, the quest deadline is up. So they kind of got trapped in this, this casino um, and time like sped by them. Um, we're on to chapter 17, which is we shop for waterbeds. Um, so they find a taxi and they end up being able to use the Lotus, um, casino credits to get them to Santa Monica beach. And Percy tries to explain to Grover and Annabeth the dream that he had, but he can't remember all the details because the Lotus casino kind of fries your memory. That's why people can't figure out what date it is. Um, they try to figure out if the voice in Percy's dream was Hades and if Hades actually did steal the master bowl. They only have one day left to find it. So they get to the beach at sunrise, or I'm sorry, sunset on that same day. Um, Percy walks into the waves and is underwater and a shark kind of approaches him and is like, hey, come with me. So Percy grabs his fin. Um, the shark takes Percy further out into the ocean until he's at this basically canyon in the middle of the ocean. And um the water, a water spirit comes up from there and it sounds like his mother to him and it's the same spirit that he met in Mississippi. Um, she's a spirit that works for Poseidon and Percy's kind of annoyed that his dad didn't come to see him, but the spirit says, don't be judgmental. Um, they can't, favor, the gods can't show favoritism. So she gives Percy three pearls and says, when you're in need, smash a pearl at your feet. Um, she warns him not to trust Hades and to follow his heart no matter what happens, and then she disappears. So Percy comes out of the ocean. Um, the three of them end up taking a bus to West Hollywood, and they're looking for DOA Recording Studios, which is the gates to the underworld, but no one's ever heard of it or knows where it is. Um, in the meantime, Percy sees Smelly Gave on TV again crying <laughs> and um, trying to catch Percy because he's this horrible person. They start seeing some really crazy people in West Hollywood, um, and Percy's not feeling comfortable at all. And they end up getting attacked by a group of rich kids with knives. Um, the, he can't use Riptide because they're mortals, so they're, they're not monsters. So they just run as fast as they can. And they end up going into a waterbed palace, Krusty's waterbed palace. Um, <laughs> and Krusty invites them to try some waterbeds. So they try a couple of them, and then, of course, it's a trap. So they get trapped by Krusty. Um, Krusty <laughs> stretches out these beds to try to make them, like, six feet long, and he's stretch, trying to stretch Annabeth and Grover as well. And then um, we end up meeting Procrusty, Procrustes, which is uh, another mythical creature who's trying to stretch who stretches people to kill them. So Percy ends up somehow convincing Krusty um, to lay in one of the beds himself. And then Percy uses his sword to chop off his head. 
he frees Annabeth and Grover, and it turns out that the entrance to the underworld is right around the block from a, a bulletin board in the in the shop. So they're in good shape. So we're headed to the underworld, and that's where I leave you guys. Um, it was crazy. It was a lot of crazy things happening and funny and just action packed. So um, and it's only going to get better because we're going to the underworld now. So anything can happen, right? Um, I hope you guys are doing okay. Hang in there. Sorry the video is so long. <laughs> Four chapters. We're almost to the end of the book. So hang in there and take it easy and enjoy all the wonderful weather that's happening right now. <laughs> Bye, guys.